Local news. Sometimes it's hard to identify. Sometimes you know what it is right when you see it. But how is news gathered, crafted, and delivered? When a local TV station puts together a story that lasts a couple minutes, there is a process. But sometimes that process is more interesting than the story itself. We're going to tell you the behind the scenes little nuggets that don't make it to TV. We are bringing you the people on the front lines in the action in a different light. This is Jay Wallace. Welcome to KVU Off the Airwaves. Everything you see in a news story is produced like anything else. It has to be shot, edited, and pieced together in a way that makes sense. The people responsible for this, the creation, sequencing, selection of shots, that's the photographers or photojournalists. Those are the folks you'll see holding that big camera on their shoulders when you happen to drive by a crime scene or see them standing on the sidelines. It's a position in local news that is starting to change, just as the way we all consume news changes as well. So for this week, we brought in Dennis Thomas, one of the photographers here at KVU. And Dennis, to be a photographer, that means a lot of different things for a lot of different industries. But for local news, what you do, what does that mean to be a photographer? Well, I mean, it's mostly like the military calls it videographer, which is more closely what I actually do. A lot closer, I mean, I, yeah. I shoot video. Photographer, people think still camera. Which exactly. We do do that, just nowhere near the scale of what I would call an actual photographer. You're part of this industry. There's a lot of different labels for you guys, right? Kind of list off a lot of the different ways y'all are labeled. Well, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, we have a whole bunch of different labels. I mean, photographer, photojournalist, uh, you know, wizard. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, photographers, I think the main reason we became, we call it photographers because of the NPPA, National Press Photographers Association, which kind of groups us still photographers and videographers together. Okay. So, and since a lot, of, a lot of stuff in this business, a lot of businesses, they keep stuff from a long time ago. It doesn't change. Like we still say, do we get that on tape, even though we haven't used tape in a, in a decade? You know, or did you, we get that on film, which we haven't used right. film in like 40 years. So it's just kind of an old term that we still use calling us photographers when actually we're closer to videographers, which is what the military calls what I do. So you've gone through a transition of working with reporters and now multi-skilled journalists too. That's what I am, MSJs, where they also shoot too. How's that kind of changed what you do when you go out to do stories when you're with reporters and MSJs, sometimes not? How's that changed? Well, there's there's been MSJs for a long time, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, sports has always basically shot their own stuff. Right. And before we used to not call them MSJs, we used to call them one man bands. Mm -hmm. So it just it seems like now there's a lot more MSJs out there. So basically, what that's changed for me, not much. I do a lot of special projects, so I'm pretty much doing his business as usual. Right. But on occasion, I will come out and I'll work with different reporters, and sometimes I'll work with MSJs. Another part is. Way back in the past, there were also solely editors that the photographer would go out, shoot the video, come back, and then there would be someone that would roll the tape, would figure out how to edit it. But a big part, like you said, you found a select area. You're really good at editing. I started off as an editor uh, tape to tape back in 99. Okay. Where do you think um, the direction of the photographer is going? Is it changing? Is it good? What do you think? Well, I mean, the photographers, are, I mean, there's a lot less, a lot less of us now. We also, when this change has happened, is when the change went from uh, tape and SD to HD. Okay. So a lot of the old photographers out there are really good, don't really know what's going on now. I and mean, even the live shots have changed. It used to be a huge truck you'd have to take out. Yep. And now we have this little backpack that goes off cell phone technology. Right. So we can go a lot more different places. I mean, everything has its ups and its downs. Like if there's no cell phone coverage, you're not going live now, which is right. a problem. Even like six years ago, we would have been like, what are you talking about? And when you're at a story... One thing we try to do is you want the story you're shooting to be as natural as possible, right? To yes. be real. They, we don't want them to think we're there. What do you try to do as a photographer when you have this big camera? Is there anything you do in particular to try to get the people you're talking to, you're interviewing, you're shooting to make them feel comfortable? Well, I mean, the main thing I always do is I just have this way of looking like I'm not paying attention. So people look over me like, oh, that guy's... And I turn the tablet light off so that you can't see when I'm recording in it. Right. And when while I'm filming, it looks like I'm looking off and doing something totally different. 
like I'm uh, playing on my phone or I'm doing whatever because it makes people act more natural. I'm not trying to be sneaky in any way. It just makes people act more natural when they don't think a camera is on them. I mean, they see the camera there. They know they, they could be filmed, so it's not like I'm filming people without their knowledge. I just don't like them to know the exact point I'm filming. And sometimes I will even pretend like I'm filming when I'm not so they get all the goofiness out that they were going to do anyway. So one thing with our job is we see some pretty weird things, some crazy things. We go towards the weirdness when it happens. What's one of the stories, one of the things that happened when you were out that was just mind-boggling? Um, it was like early 2000s. I was working down in Corpus Christi. We went to go cover Hurricane Claudette. Okay. Me and my reporter were interviewing somebody in their house as the, as the eye was passing over. My reporter lost the keys somewhere in the house, so we didn't know. We were outside. I go out. The, the wind removes my glasses and just takes them away, so I can't see anything. So I gave him the keys, and then he lost them inside, which we didn't know that. We thought he lost them outside. So we're on our hands and knees looking for these keys, and, you know, there's shingles and stuff flying past us. The people come out, like, what are y'all doing? Y'all need to take cover. We're like, uh, we can't. We can't find the keys. So we end up finding the keys. And as we're going, another wind gr- gust comes and just like rips my reporter's pants off. And the ha- <laughs> still had the YouTube video of us showing all the destruction. And then at the end, he did goes, he have sweatpants on or they were the rain pants? And all he had was his oh, uh, boxers gosh. on underneath. Uh, okay. And it's uh, uh-huh. he, anyone can look it up. You yeah. look up Hurricane Claudette versus Bart Bedsole, and you'll see my stand up where I pan down and you see just this yellow plastic blowing in the wind at the end of the stand up. Oh, my god! And I used to joke that that hurricane knew where to hit us. He's a reporter. He's supposed to look good. So it messed with his looks. <laughs> and it messed with my vision because it took my glasses. What? Okay. So the storm was mad at you guys in that situation. Has a person, has an actual person ever been mad at you when you've been doing a story? What's the angriest someone's been at you when you've been doing a story? I was filming a house fire once. And it was, you know, it, it's sad. Somebody's house is burning down. Right. The lady that owned the house was very upset that I was there, but she waited for when I was putting my camera up to come up, and she, like, hit me square in my back. And I turn around, and I see this little old lady there, and I basically just, I was like, ma'am, you can either stop hitting me, I can go to the police officer over there, or I can defend myself, which which of the three do you want to pick? And I'm sorry about your house, but I can't let you just sit here and wail on me while I'm trying to... Put my stuff. I'm actually trying to leave now. I do have another story about a guy hitting me that was pretty hilarious. Why are so many people hitting you? I don't know. I was uh, I was at a gas station. This guy is stopped. Uh, we we're doing an interview, a hero story. This guy basically stopped this guy from being his wife. Okay. And I walked up and I was filming him, and this little guy comes up and just starts wailing on me in the chest. At the gas station. At the gas station, and I could tell the guy was, you know, something was off about him. So I was, so I just kept interviewing him because it wasn't doing much. It wasn't shaking my camera. It wasn't doing anything. And the hero guy was looking at me like, what the heck are you doing? And I was like, just ignore him, man. He, he's, he's out of frame. He's little and <laughs> he's we're fine, you know? And then he kept going. Then he started making noise. So at my station at the time, all you had to dial was star 886 and it would call the newsroom. Okay. So I picked up my phone and dialed it, which looks like you're dialing 911. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I have a, a guy here. I think, uh, you know, somebody needs to come by and get him because uh, he's becoming really violent. While I was looking at the guy, the guy just took off running. And then my uh, assignment uh, director at the time was a Robert. He was like, what are you doing? I was like, I just had to get rid of a guy. Thanks. Just someone's up. hitting me. And then, the, then right after that, the guy said, maybe we should be interviewing you as the hero. <laughs> and I was like, uh, no, 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 just you could tell by some by the look of somebody if they're a problem or not. If you didn't make any noise and mess up, and if you didn't look so distracted, I wish would have kept going. Wow. Even though we do some of the same things, there's not really an, an, an unhealthy competition between, like, photographers or other photographers or other MSJs. I feel like it's more of a... Don't you think it's more of a, a challenge? At least for me, when I watch your stuff... I try to be better when I see something, a way that you shot or edited something. It's like a healthy competition. Do you feel that when you watch other photographers work or you see other stories? It's not necessarily um, where there's bad blood, but it's more of a healthy competition. Wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. I mean, I believe everyone can improve. And every time I look at something, if it's something I didn't do, I'll be like, I wonder how they did that. I don't want to do that exactly, but maybe I can incorporate something like that to make my stuff better. Yeah. What is... 
the most common thing people call you when you're out on shoots? Because people call reporters some crazy weird things. What do they refer to you as when people just kind of heckle you or just call out at you? Hey, cameraman. Cameraman. Or yep. if I'm wearing a, my KVU jacket, hey, KVU. It becomes your name. You yeah. are KVU. I'm KVU. <laughs> do you ever get the people that get suddenly scared? They think they're on camera and the camera's actually pointed the completely 180 degrees other direction. Oh yeah, they r totally run away. Yeah, and you're like, I'm not even aimed at you at all. That's not how a camera works. It right. doesn't shoot out of the battery. But sometimes people see that camera. Oh, it's deer and headlights sometimes. It's just complete <laughs> deer and headlights. All right, well, Dennis, I know you're editing today, editing a story. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, we'll let you get back to your work. Thank you. Hey, if you like what you heard on KVU Off the Airwaves, check out our daily newscasts, Daybreak from 4.30 to 7, Midday at 11, KVU News at 5 and 6, The Night Beat at 10, and anytime on KVU.com.